Well, welcome, everyone. My guest today, Gabriel Rutten, MD, from Holland. Say hello, would you, Gabriel? Hello, everybody. Okay. Gabriel and I, Gabriel and I are going to are going to dig into a very widespread issue that many people have, having to do with anxiety. We're going to talk about solving your anxiety issues. We're going to talk about what really causes them, ah, oh, what solutions may be, and so on. Now, as a background to you, Gabriel and I, Gabriel and I co-authored a book in the Dutch language. Gabriel, what's the title of the book? The book is called Official EFT from A to Z. Only in Dutch. Right? In Dutch. Okay. Pretty much the same in Dutch. All right. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take certain parts of that. It's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very detailed book having to do with the EFT, optimal EFT, the unseen therapist, our latest advancements, and so on. And we're going to take a piece of that out, at least for this discussion having to do with anxiety, what's in that book. So even though it's not in English, at least not yet, um, you will have this important information about how to approach that. Did I say it right, Gabriel? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So we are, you know, we'll, we're, we will translate the book into English, obviously, but um, uh, in, it, it was written in Dutch first and it will be published pretty soon. But so this is, you know, to make sure that we can discuss it already in English so that other people can yeah. benefit okay. from it. All right. All right. So let's, let's extract a little piece of that. But I always like to start these things with looking at anxiety. Just, you know, in, in a way, just about everybody has some form of anxiety. It may be mild. It may be really big time. But, you know, they're... they're they, they react. They react a lot. They're, they seem to be nervous a lot. Uh, they have general anxiety and so on. Um, do you have any any guess as to what percentage of the population has a a concernable version or level of anxiety? Any thought on that? I wouldn't know that um, um, from the top of my head. No. But, you know, it's, it's a big number. It's a big number because anxiety and fears, all kinds of fears, is something that drives our behavior big time. So, um, well, if you really look at, at, you know, our emotions, there's three big groups. It's fear, it's sadness, and it's anger. As Those are the three big negative emotions uh, groups because there's all kinds of details there um, but even if you look at sadness or at anger if you dig, dig uh, deep enough you oftentimes reach fear so yeah. fear is a big thing yeah i i would also add in there the idea of guilt a lot of us have just about everybody's done stuff. They would rather go back. <laughs> Let's go back and redo. I I do it. Everybody everybody does. It. So it's almost impossible to get through this world without having some things like that. So we feel guilty, whether it's a big time guilt or smaller guilt. It's there, and that also is a is a uh, cause for anxiety. But generally speaking, it's sort of a sort of an unrest kind of thing. I'm thinking. One of the clients that I've dealt with here recently was anxiety squared. I mean, big time anxiety. Agoraphobia had a very good, difficult time leaving his house. Anxiety all the time, always worried about stuff. OCD, a form yep. of anxiety because everything had to be just in the right place at the right time and all of that. And in this case, it didn't take us but two, maybe three sessions to completely take care of everything. I, I've, I don't want to put that out as that's how easy it works all the time, but that's sort of the exception. But what we did was we aimed at these specific events in his life, a few of them, that really you know caused him this kind of 
response. Yes. We took care of those unseen therapists and just poof like magic. Now, it doesn't always go that way, does it, Gabrielle? It does not always go that way. Although this is ob obviously, you know, uh, proof that if you approach this with EFT in the right way, you are able to um, resolve anxiety issues, fear issues, and all that, phobias, uh, panic attacks, all that. And so I think it's an interesting subject. And I would always like I always like to start with pointing out that. If you're anxious, if you're fearful, if you're phobic about stuff, that is learned behavior. You have trained yourself somehow because of everything you went through in your lifetime to develop this stress pattern, which shows up, which shows itself as anxiety or fear or panic attack or whatever it is, as long as it's, it's, it is fear related. And so, everything um that you you don't train yourself you know consciously into reacting like that but that's how behavior your long-term memory work together because all behavior is learned behavior it's trained in behavior because that's how we learn everything basically from uh, you know being a baby and a small child onwards and so that also is the the um the reason why you are able to resolve uh, anxiety issues because we do what we always do with eft you start looking identifying what are the causes of this behavior so you need to do a couple of things you know to sort of work out so what exactly do i need to work on first of all um it's always good to draw a timeline and just identify when did it start and then identify as best as you can when did it start sometimes you'll say well well my life but still try to identify when did this behavior start and i th i think th this is what my way of seeing it that when did it start would be what specific event was around at that time? When exactly. was it my mother said this or my father did that or my, some teacher told me this or whatever, that my way of learning it is to have some specific event, typically it's traumatic if it's, you know, if it's a negative yes. thing we're trying to get rid of. This negative thing, which we buy into at a very young age because we don't have any way to debate it really when we're four years old or eight years old or something. So we have these specific events. So if if we can go, my view, if we can go down, if we can go back to, ah, here is the, the major specific event that launches this form of fear, this form of guilt, this form of sadness, anger, et cetera, that's behind the anxiety. Now we have pinpointed something. Yes. But let me let me let me also talk about that a little bit and I'm gonna get your thoughts on this, Gabrielle. Yes, I've seen many cases where we can identify such a such a specific event and we can do a large amount of collapsing of the anxiety of the emotions involved. I'm also finding but in many cases, it isn't just one specific event. Yes. It's a whole series. My father always told me I was stupid. Okay. That wasn't just one specific event. It wasn't just two. <laughs> it was a whole series of those things. And now we, you know, we have to address that as a series, okay. which can be done. It can be done. We need to collapse our emotional response to that yes Go ahead. I, agree. I agree entirely it's hardly ever one specific event that does happen sometimes however it's more a series and i would like to point out that if you identify ah but that's very you know these are the types of specific moments where i really my reaction really was fear my my reaction was really phobic or anxious or whatever else 
I want to stress that you need to work on one specific event, every single one of them, until their reaction is gone. Why? Because every sp single specific situation, you train yourself you know, to have this reaction. So there is a connection between what was the trigger and your stress response, because we're talking about the sympathetic stress response, which shows up as fear or anxiety. And so if you want to, and this training has got, uh, probably been going on all your life. So there is this connection that, and that needs to be severed. Otherwise the trigger can still uh, activate the stress response for you. So I just want to emphasize if you want to successfully um, resolve your anxiety issues. You need to identify the specific moments where it happens and then really work until you, you're you unable, you really need to test well, you're unable to activate the stress reaction again. So you're unable to feel the fear in that moment. Okay. And so now, you'll probably end up with a whole series of specific events and that needs uh, where this needs to happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to address the audience just for the, for the moment. Some members of the listening in are, are members of our advanced students, and they know all about the specific events. They know how to address them. We give training that way, advanced training. We give 30 advanced lessons. We get a lot of material that we are assuming people know. Other folks here uh, are 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 winning. They're getting they're getting themselves involved at, in a more beginning state. Mm -hmm. So I want to go over just very briefly how that's how this works. It's it's I have a a metaphor. In fact, Gabrielle has put some information about this metaphor on our advanced lessons. But but here's a tabletop. I went to a tabletop and table legs metaphor. The tabletop would be something. What well, I'll put it this way: This is a tabletop. It is supported by table legs. If we remove the table legs, tabletop falls. Very simple metaphor. For our purposes here, the tabletop would be anxiety. Okay. Table legs are all the specific events we've had in our life that support that. Anxious moments. Um, uh, critical. We've been criticized. We've been traumatized. We've been rejected. All these. All the, these are all specific events underlying the anxiety thing. So we take care of them one at a time. We bring in unseen therapists. Uh, there's a sp special way to do this to collapse that we can bring that down to zero so it never bothers you at all and the more of those specific events that we collapse collapse yes. the more freedom we have yeah. i just want i just wanted to put that in so that yeah so the the, the the newcomers here have a better sense of what's going on but with that simple metaphor and some advanced techniques around that we can do magical things with this that might with conventional means take weeks, months, years, if you could even do it. So anyway, that's yes, my, yes. Little, my little piece. Yeah. And I would like to add, so this is what we call detective work. So you analyze, you identify what are the exact specific moments where this anxiety issue of mine happens. And so the question, how did I learn to, to react like this or who taught me this are very important questions to you know identify in your personal history what are these specific moments where this happened where did i learn this so that would you know th this is a big chunk of work which we call detective work there's two other approaches that i would like to point out um you still have anxiety otherwise you wouldn't be you, you don't want to work on it you'll have it now so Next thing that you need to do, do everything, but next one is identify the exact moments in your present life, your day-to-day -day stuff, where you react with these kinds of anxieties or fears or panic attacks or phobic uh, reactions. You can either just you know, immediately identify this moment is a specific moment because my reaction is anxiety or fear or whatever else. Well, wait, and just, 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 an example would be yesterday I was talking to my boss and he said something and I got very, that exactly. would be an example. Okay. Yes. It's a current 
it's a current time thing which is triggering you yes yeah, go ahead. and my my advice would be to do that on a daily basis identify your worst moment of the day if it's three do three but you know identify your worst moment in day where you are anxious where you are fearful and completely neutralize them there's another way of using that moment because these patterns tend to be lifelong things they start at some you know at some point during your life and then um if you want to work on them now you obviously still are you know bothered by anxious thoughts anxious reactions and all that so another very successful way to work with this is if after you've identified your worst moment of the day where fear or the panic or whatever else plays a, an important role when the intensity after doing the personal peace procedure for a couple of times as soon as the intensity of all the emotions specific specifically fear now is under five but not yet zero during the reliving the moment during you know testing how much fear or anxiety is still there ask yourself when did i feel like this before when did i feel like this because that would very precisely bring you back to an earlier memory that is part of this same stress pattern i so might i might i'm sorry no i might even I, shift that a little bit instead of when did I f feel this anxiety, this anxious moment before? When did I, f if you can, when did I first feel this? And the farther back you go, the more likely it is to be foundational. So yes. it'd be easy to say, well, I felt that, you know, when I was in college. Um, but you probably felt that when you were four. <laughs> yes. And that would be more foundational than something you may have felt in yes. Yes. college, you know. Yeah, so if you look at the whole track of fearful events, present day and then earlier back, all the way back to the first time where it started, all of these specific events are part of this stress pattern. And so the way you, you, you taught yourself how you learned to be anxious about something when you were four is foundational. However, it's worth your while to look at others also because um, uh, at an you know, later stage in your life, different aspects may play a role in the same stress pattern, uh, pattern of, of being anxious, you know, uh, about something. And so identifying the worst moment of the day and either just completely neutralize it or if it's nice, you know, nicely charged, so to speak, as soon as it's under five, ask yourself these questions so that you can identify earlier uh, moments. That gives you a very firm grip on working on all the specific events that play a role here. Um, and I mean, um, with optimal EFT, EFT, you don't need, I mean, obviously a tabletop will have maybe a thousand table, uh, table legs, every leg being a specific situation. However, the, um, the experience is with uh, optimal EFT, the generalization effect is quite big. And so if you, you know, play around with this, if you identify these specific moments like that, you probably will um, have a, a lot of result fairly quickly. You don't have to do you know, a couple of hundred of these specific moments. So yeah, this I is a very interesting way to go about this yeah, the way i usually say that it's a really important part of all because it seems like yeah my father said this to me or did this to me you know many 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 times or my mother or my uncle or whatever many 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 times thousand or something like that do i have to bring an unseen therapist for each and every one of them <laughs> that's exhausting just thinking about it no there's enough commonality among them similar people like father for example similar gestures similar tones of voice these are similar content so you really need to do 5 10 15 or 20 typically really really well and it generalizes over all the rest okay. exactly. very very important item very important item 
Um, and it, it simplifies, it simplifies and, and makes much more elegant the therapy process. More, Gabrielle? One more, one more. So the other way, if you are anxious now, if you have a panic attack, you can also work on the symptoms directly with a meditation, with a personal peace procedure with unseen therapist. And I do encourage you to do that because even if you can only bring back the anxiety for like one or two or three points, if you start doing that, it will give you, you know, the experience that you do have something that will help you. It will not solve the problem, but it's very good to do because you will feel more assured that you have something um, available to help you bring down the the um, the charge so that you feel yeah. less anxious. Well, it doesn't solve the problem, but it, it is helpful to do it, you know, to work on the symptom. That would be particularly valuable if somebody was undergoing a panic attack. In a panic attack, you know, I mean, you want something now that yeah. can sh reduce it, okay? Yes. You, may, you, know, you might be able to take a pill for it, et cetera, but you can also do no, this. This, yeah. Yeah, uh, and once you get used to it, up. Oh, and yes. as you do that, it's just my experience anyway, and I can't say this is true for absolutely everybody, but as you do that, aim at this symptom when it occurs rather than the cause, which is where the longer-term benefits exist. You're also, you're also doing something which I call taking the edge off or kicking the center out of you're, you're still addressing the problem in some way although not perfect but it gives you immediate relief and likely does something with the longer term cause yes. we still want to get down to longer term cause the specific events because that's where we can really clean house beautifully all right and so that the anxiety the panic attacks and all the stuff that goes with that is this Yes. Repla replaced by better and better and better levels of peace. And also, I would like to add that what you know, when you have a panic attack or when you're really anxious, if we look at the score between zero and 10, zero being nothing, 10 being maximum, many people increase their anxiety, their fear, or their, you know, their stressful response because they start thinking about what is happening and why is it happening and what do I need what do I do what do I do and if the the charge is really high so uh, you know way above five seven eight nine ten it's not a good idea to start thinking about why is this happening to me why is it happening again why can't I be calm and all that because that will increase the anxiety it will increase the fear so working on it on the symptom and bring it down until it's around five, preferably a little under five, that is the moment where you can start thinking, okay, so what happened just now? Why am I so upset? Did I think something? Did somebody say something? Did I see something? Did I hear something? So then you are more able to identify what is the exact specific moment here that turned on this anxiety. Otherwise, you get lost into thinking about it, and that increases the anxiety. Oh, yeah, and then when sure. you're around five, that allows you to identify what is exactly the specific thing that happened just now. Why, why was my anxiety turned on? And then you're, uh, you know, again, working more specifically, which helps resolve the whole thing. Sure. sure. Okay. Anything more you want to add, Gabrielle? No, just a quick summary. So there's three things. The symptoms, bring it down under five. Then you can identify the specific moment. You can ask yourself what's, you know, earlier, uh, earlier events. And the first one, um, identify the, your worst moment of the day. Work on that. And do detective work. Ask, how did I learn to react like this? Who taught me this? So these are three areas you can work around with with unseen therapist. Yeah. And those are, those are useful topics for beginners to all this or advanced students know where to go within the course and, and so on like that. By the way, uh, before we close out here, I just want to emphasize below this video, there are essential links 
Uh, there's my free ebook, The Unseen Therapist, gives you a really good introduction to all of this. Uh, there's advanced training if you want that. There's a, my free EFT newsletter support. That's down there as well. Links to that and so on. So anyway, with a big hug to you and a, a lot of gratitude, Gabriel, thank you, thank you, thank you. Big hug, hug back. Okay. And to everybody listening in, we'll see you next time. Thank you.